Yeah. We'll call this uh, meeting to order. We'll reconvene. Uh, so uh, we have attendance. Everybody is in attendance. And we have the public comments, agenda, non agenda items, and I'll read those. Pursuant to board policy number 2350, public comment may be limited to three minutes per person or 30 minutes per topic. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting at which the agenda item is called. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter not on the agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting for open forum on non-agenda items. Public comment cards are available at the information table at the rear of the board meeting from the recording secretary or online. We ask that all speakers come to the uh, podium to address the board. Thank you. And so we have the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, you wanna read this in that part? Ready, begin. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, approval of the meeting agenda. Do we have a motion? Second, any comments? Hearing none, advice? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, item number uh, 10.1, open forum and non-agenda items. I believe we have one card and that is Eugene Hernandez. Uh, Eugene Hernandez, Antelope Valley Green Party. I would just like to say that I'm a proud graduate of um, Antelope Valley College, 1998 and at the time, I was working very closely with Brea Shuda. Uh, she was a great human being, and I'm glad that you named a building after her. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene. Okay, presentation 11.1, 2022 Educational Master Plan Update. Okay, Rick, am I unmuted? Your mic is live. Okay, great. Um, members of the Board of Trustees, uh, Superintendent President Zealot, members of the cabinet and uh, colleagues who are assembled this evening. In a short set of slides that we're gonna share with you this evening, we're giving you a few highlights from the educational master plan that we've been working on throughout the spring and summer, and Rick is gonna be kind enough to advance my slides. Rick, let's go to the first slide then. This is a list of the uh, topics or chapters that will be in the uh, educational plan, except for the goals chapter. Uh, the rest of them have largely been drafted. We've been posting uh, drafts of the project uh, to college website dedicated for that purpose and briefing the strategic planning committee uh, as we have gone along uh, on this work. Let's go to the next slide. As you know, you have a fairly large geographic area that you serve. There are not too many competitors in terms of brick and mortar uh, institutions. Uh, you likely also know that many of the residents who live in the major two cities uh, commute outside of those cities to work largely to uh, the city of Los Angeles and the ring cities that are around uh, LA proper. Most of your students, 95% of them live in the district and this is looking at almost a decade uh, of experience. And over uh, a period of several uh, seven semesters fall terms, one of the things we discovered is that you have had an average of 4,000 of your residents living in the district who are actually attending some other community college. And I put together a list uh, for the SPC group of the nine primary colleges that uh, are attracting your students. 
Let's go to the next slide. Job growth uh, is projected over the next decade, and we've been using data from the uh, Employment Development Department, looking primarily at uh, Los Angeles and Kern County. And you can see the figures in this slide of the increased projected growth in jobs. And you can also see the listing of the primary industry sectors where those jobs are expected to be. The three top ones are the same in both counties, healthcare, professional and business services, and construction. And indeed, no matter where I go in the state of California, healthcare is always the top industry. The bottom part of this slide is a highlight of the, some of the kinds of industries uh, that the AVEDGE group is seeking to recruit to locate into the Antelope Valley area. Let's go to the next slide. We looked at your participation rate over about a decade and noticed that it's been declining a bit. Uh, this rate is a calculation that compares the distinct annual headcount of uh, individuals enrolled at AVC divided by the population of adults in the service area. Let's go to the next slide. Looking uh, again at a little bit of history over the decade of 2000 to 2010, your average uh, growth annually was modest, 2.7%, but it's slowed in the next decade, 2010 to 2021, and it's projected to slow even more, become very slow. My source for that projection is an organization that the Chancellor's Office uses and many cities and counties in the state of California, in fact, the nation, uh, also use for these kinds of projections. In particular, on the next slide, Rick, I wanted to focus on uh, young people uh, and give you a clue that throughout California, the numbers of high school graduates are declining. And we see some evidence in the two primary public school districts that serve you uh, of declining graduates uh, as well. But in this table, we're looking within your physical official district at the projected and the past high school age group and typical college going age group. And you'll notice that there is a decline there that is projected over the next five years. And while your early college efforts in the past and your intentions into the near future are admirable, um, you will perhaps want to give some attention to trying to recruit adult learners. Let's go to the next slide. Educational attainment in your official district uh, for those age 25 or older looks like these numbers. And at the bottom two lines, I've just given you a summary uh, for the numbers of these residents with a high school diploma or less. And then a second recap, high school diploma or GED, and then some college, but not a degree. The percentages you see in bold on the lower right uh, are a bit higher than Ventura County or even Los Angeles County, but they're a bit lower than neighboring Kern County. Uh, the concentration of the lower educational attainment is in Palmdale and Rosamond. And of course, this translates to while there may be jobs available for people with this level of educational attainment, the jobs usually have a limit to the income that people are able to garner. Let's go to the next slide. This is sort of a recap of your instructional programs, and you have a rich variety that the college has sponsored. But I wanted to call your attention to the one row of information that's in italics toward the bottom. Uh, you have two programs that are non-credit, uh, that are under a category that the state calls career development and college preparation. Uh, that's an area where we think you may have opportunities to add some additional programs of study, particularly perhaps in the Challenger project as it gets rolling. Let's go to the next slide. As we look at how you deliver the instructional service uh, over time, uh, I want to look first at this top small table where we're giving you a decade's worth of comparison. Antelope Valley, 
Compare to your neighbor to the north, Bakersfield, and your neighbor to the south and west, College of the Canyons. And in that first row, uh, the percentage of enrollment in day classes, you'll see that Antelope Valley is much higher there than either of the two neighboring colleges or the statewide average for that matter. And if you look at the bottom row in that top table, the unknown is actually online instruction. You see the Antelope College in the past has been well below your neighbors and the state average. Now in the bottom table, I didn't want to leave this topic without reassuring you, the college has made strides in, in adding more students to online classes before the COVID uh, pandemic hit in uh, 2020 spring. And you can see the, the numbers there of enrollments have been growing from 2010 to 2019. And that's perhaps going to be one of the major discussion points uh, for the college going forward. What should the balance be between the online offerings and the face-to-face in-person, on-class, or maybe even the hybrid kind of offerings? Now, we use 2019 as kind of a cutoff and for some of our analysis, a baseline, because it was considered to be the last so-called normal fall semester before COVID hit. Let's do the next slide, Rick. One of the major chapters in the Ed Plan uh, deals with the future of your programs of instruction. Uh, part of that chapter is a comparison of the job opening projections over a decade, and you saw that decade time range from EDD on an earlier slide. Uh, looking at those openings in jobs or occupations by educational level expected to enter the occupation, we compare that to the number of graduates from related community college programs looking at the average over the last three years. In our analysis, we were concentrating on Kern and Los Angeles counties. And what we've put together is a listing in the appendices of occupations where there were 200 or more annual openings expected and noted both uh, where AVC did not have a program in place yet, as well as occupations where the college had a program so that you might consider starting a program like for those occupations on this slide or expanding uh, your existing program to help close the gap. Now, all of these are career and technical education programs, which are expensive to start and expensive to maintain. So you want to approach with a, a good deal of further study uh, before you jump into it. The other part of this chapter is a, a capturing of visions for the future development of your programs of study. And we captured that information through a questionnaire, focus groups, and a number of email exchanges with uh, faculty and instructional leaders and student service leaders on the campus. Let's go to the next slide, Rick. The final chapter that we're putting into the education plan uh, makes a projection of future uh, attendance that the college uh, is likely to see. Now, uh, the kind of measure of the contact, the currency that's used for this purpose and for facilities planning is called weekly student contact hours. And at the top of this slide, I've given you an illustration of how that might be calculated if you were teaching a class that met with the students three hours a week and you had 20 students enrolled, it would produce 60 weekly student contact hours. Now, we have done some analysis of your past uh, track record on WISH, as well as looking at the uh, uh, population projections and the history. We provided the college with three possible scenarios for future development. The college chose the one that was for 0.5% annual growth after 2022 recognizing that from our baseline year fall 2019, it's going to take a couple years to recover from the impact of COVID. Now, as you look at these bars, particularly at 2025 and 2030, 
it's important to understand that we're not guaranteeing this growth. Uh, we have reason to believe it's possible for the college to achieve those growth levels. What's more important is we are saying to you as a board and to your team that you've hired to help you on facilities planning that when you reach that level of weekly contact hours, you will want to be sure you have enough facilities, instructional spaces, uh, to support that level of student instruction. Let's go to the final slide, uh, Rick, which is uh, the concluding slide. Uh, if you have questions, I'd uh, be glad to respond to those at this time. Anybody have questions? Mm -hmm. I do. Um, yes, sir. As I look at your EMP plan, I'm, I, I have to question, and please excuse me, pardon me if I'm mistaken. I don't really see a plan. I see a lot of outcome data and a lot of projected data. Are there any goals or any direction recommended with your, your plan? Or I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Yes, that, that's a good this. question. Uh, the goals are still being developed. The, the locus of that discussion is the Strategic Planning Committee uh, and the College uh, Executive Committee. Uh, they're fairly well along in that discussion. Uh, the second uh, item that was right below goals, recommendations chapter, uh, is a whole set of about two dozen or more uh, thoughts that we're sharing with the college that might be more action items uh, that the college might want to consider pursuing uh, into the future. The habit at Antelope Valley, as I worked with you in uh, 2018 and now again in 2022, is to fashion some broad goal statements in the educational plan and then take those and fashion them into a three-year time horizon for a strategic plan that has a set of action items and objectives. And that's the work that the Strategic Planning Committee and others at the college will do, uh, taking off from all the kinds of things that we've assembled for them uh, to consider in the educational plan. And indeed, some of the goal material has been uh, sparked by some of the facts and the highlights that I've been sharing with you tonight. Uh, Mr. Reeves? Yes, I have two questions, sir. Uh, one question, uh, are the statistics that you used in this presentation, did you get this from the uh, chancellor's office in uh, North? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of the question. Did you get the, the statistic, the stats that you used on your presentation? Did you get it from the chancellor's office? The list of programs, you mean? Yeah, all the numbers that you used, where did you get the numbers? I got those from the chancellor's office uh, inventory of programs. Okay, I have another question. Um, LACCD has many of those programs that you say that we are lacking up here. Um, like uh, LA Trade Tech, uh, East Los Angeles College. How are those colleges faring with all these technical programs? Uh, when you mean faring, are you asking how many graduates? Um, yeah, their enrollment, is their enrollment pretty steady because they have these technical programs? Well, all colleges in the state with the exception of a handful have had a massive decline in enrollment uh, across the board. Uh, when I was putting together the labor market analysis, making this occupational gap assessment, what I'm looking at is the collective count of graduates from community college programs that match up to the occupational projections uh, I'm not looking at any one particular district. I'm looking at all the districts in Los Angeles County and all the districts in Kern County, all the colleges together to get a count of graduates over the last three years on average. And I'm comparing that to the annual projection of job openings uh, in the same geographic area. 
And when I noticed an occupational opening where the associate degree or certificate would be expected entry, and the annual was uh, are on the order of 200 uh, openings beyond the demand uh, or the supply being created by the colleges, I took note of that and uh, I put that in the slide and with greater detail in the educational planning document. And thank you very much for your presentation. Yes. I have a question. Yes, Michelle. Um, so when I look at slide nine, uh, current programs of instruction, you have the 150 programs, one bachelor's, 26 ADT programs, 20 associates. I believe for a presentation of an educational master plan, that should be outlined what these courses are. And I, I don't think that's too much to ask because it gives the board the ability to look and see where some of the gaps are. Um, the second part is, as I looked at the plan, I totally agree with Ms. Gaines about I don't really see the plan. It would have been good to see the strategic planning process outlined. I didn't see anything about student success and equity assessment implementation. The goals, I didn't see anything about percentages on transfers, how many kids we want to graduate. To me, those are academic measures. Uh, yes, on, all of that is going to be uh, forthcoming. The, the, the plan is not finished yet. Uh, and I, I would have to defer to the leadership of the college, and particularly the strategic planning group, uh, to determine the time of, of when they think they're going to finish that up. Now, I could add an appendices that details for you all of your instructional programs, but embedded in the uh, details for the labor market analysis is an indication of every instance where Antelope Valley has a program in place that matches to an occupational projection with openings in the future. But I could certainly easily separately give you an appendices that lists all your programs uh, of study I, I don't think that it's about the list. I think it's about the inclusiveness of the Ed Master Plan. So people could Google it, yes, but in the educational master plan itself, I think you could outline what the courses are. Thank you. We, we will add those. Anybody else? Okay, thank you for your presentation. Okay, moving along, item. 11.2 student equity update. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for the opportunity to present this evening. Um, I'm presenting tonight on a tour that we just took in July, a historically black college tour and civil rights tour. And I have some of our students who went on the tour with me and I want them to talk a little bit about their experience. Um, we took 16 students, July the 10th through the 15th to colleges uh, in the South that we have partnerships with. So first up tonight is um, Kenroy Fuller. Hi everybody, how are we doing today? Good, good, okay. Well, as you said, my name is Kenroy Fuller and I'm here to speak on my experience. Oh, speak up. Okay. I'm here to speak on my experience on the historically black college tour. It was amazing. It was one of the best experience I know the best experience I had this year, hands down. It was life changing. And as a, um, as a, as a minority that came from South Central LA, seeing, you know, the hood and low income areas to seeing where um, one of the, my favorite colleges out there that we visited Morehouse the same soil that Martin Luther King stepped on, stressed on, graduated from, and I was able, and I felt so honored going to such a place. And um, we also got to his house, so more houses, you know, more houses. And um, I feel as though that the capacity was way too low. This, it has to be doubled to 32 or even more because I feel more people, especially from my background, the minority background, need to be exposed to things like that. And they need to be shown that there's more to life than low income, crime, and jail, and I'm just so happy that I'm glad to, that you guys could hear my voice today. I'm a little nervous. This is my first time coming to a board meeting. I appreciate you guys and thank you for having me. Please, please raise that cap, that cap capacity up, please. Thank you. Hi, 
Hi, um, good, good afternoon. Good evening, sorry. <laughs> I hope you guys are well. Um, Chanel Vasquez, I'm a psychology major. So I kind of wanted to talk about um, my experience. So I'm a Latina, but I was able to go on this HBCU <laughs> tour. And um, I got to see a lot of, you know, historically changing, um, you know, movement and all that. And we were there at Selma. We were able to see like his, the history of segregation and, um, you know, I want to give a thanks to everybody who made it possible for the HBC tour and a special thank you to Ms. Hightower and Ms. Crystal, because being there, you know, we're away from our, our parents, we're away from home. They made it, you know, where we can enjoy that time. Um, but being there, I was able to see the National Civil Rights uh, Museum and, you um, I'm someone who didn't really pay attention in elementary or high school. It's a miracle that I'm here today, but um, I was able to, you know, really, uh, how do I say this? I was able to learn a lot about, about segregation and um, some of the civil rights uh, veterans were explaining, you know, their experiences and I was humbled and, you know, it, it motivated me to, pursue what I want to do, which is be a psychologist. And they said that I can make a change. And they were accepting, even though I'm Hispanic. So <laughs> I, I wish that same opportunity for millions of, well, not millions of students, but more students, you know, different races, including um, Emoja. So yeah, I just want to thank you all for that opportunity. Thank you. Hello, my name is Deron Sanders. And, uh, I'm here to speak about the HBCU trip and my experience. I want to thank Ms. Crystal and Ms. Hightower for making it happen. I just want to talk about how we got there and what I got to see my Black leaders that don't get talked about as much. As far as living in Los Angeles, a lot of kids don't have that, that, that outlook that, that that, that motivation, because when you get there, you feel motivated. You feel like I could do this. I feel like I can. I'm a proud Black student, and I want to I wanna make a change in the world. And I feel like other students like me could do it. They just got to have, they got to have motivation. They can see that they can do it. But my experience at Alabama State, I seen the coaches and every, everybody there, and it was like, they were welcoming. Like, and they call it Southern hospitality. Everybody is nice and they, right. they go full. Everybody is talking and everybody's having a good time. And I feel like students that, that, that could get together and have fun and enjoy school, they'll graduate yeah. and it will be good. And I got to see the Edmund Pettus Bridge. It made me emotional because they really fought to, for us to have these rights to, 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 to be a black student, to go to these schools. So. I just feel I just feel good, you know, and I, I hope that like the athletes could see that they could go to HBCU because uh, they don't know about these things and HBCUs, more athletes, more black kids, they would they would they would see their goals and make their parents proud, you know, because they don't have an outlook and they don't know about HBCUs, so they should know that black people are there, black people are will support you. It's not all about being alone, feeling alone. It's people there to help. That's all I got to say. Thank you, um, all three of you. Um, just want to say they're being very, very humble uh, about part of their experience. Tyron, who just spoke, was accepted on the spot at Alabama State University. <laughs> to play football and, and to give him housing. They found funding for him to, to go to school for books, for housing, for meal plan, everything on the spot, on the tour. So really excellent experience. And Kenroy, um, they got to meet the president of Morehouse College um, and really, really have some great experiences. Some of the schools that we went to when we first got there, um, and excuse me, um, went to Fort Valley College, to Clark Atlanta, to Spellhouse, Spellman, Morehouse, Morris Brown, Talladega College, Stillman College, Tuskegee, and Alabama State. Um, in addition to those schools, we were able to go to the King Center 
and the King Birth Home and his last home. We went to the Tyler Perry Studios, the Tuskegee Airmen um, Airstrip where the Red Tails flew. We went to the National Center for Civil Rights and Human Rights. Um, we went to some famous restaurants there in the South. But they're talking about that good food and Southern hospitality. Um, West Claremont, edged the Edmund Pettus Bridge where Bloody Sunday happened. And some of the amazing things that we did on the bus was we showed historical documentaries so that they knew the historical spaces that they were standing in and had an understanding of the deep uh, history that was there on the spaces that they were standing. Um, the Civil Rights Memorial Park, um, the site of the bombing of the Freedom Riders on the buses. So they got to see both of those sites and where those things happen. A lot of the famous churches that the civil rights movement happened out of, Ebenezer Baptist Church, Brown Chapel AME, which was the headquarters of the civil rights movement, Dexter Avenue Memorial Baptist Church, 16th Street Baptist Church, where the bombing of the four young girls happened and they lost their lives, and where the children's march began. And then when they went to that Ingram uh, Park right across the street. So they got to see a lot of those historical spaces. And one of the amazing things about the HBCU tour that we did was that on that tour were three civil rights leaders that had lived through that time and got to experience that. One who was with us the whole entire trip was Sherry Labidas. And she lives in Sacramento, California now, but, and she's a student in UC Berkeley. Dr. King called her as a young white woman to come and join the movement for voting rights. And so she left Berkeley for a year and during Freedom Summer really did a lot of activism and a lot of work so she spent that whole tour with our students on the bus the entire week and being able to tell her stories. Um, in the Civil Rights Museum, they were there at a counter where it simulated them doing a sit-in. And so the chairs were being kicked, your headphones, people were yelling at you and screaming at you. And so I took a picture of her watching what she went through um, as a college student. And she's like, it's like seeing myself and she's wearing her, her vintage buttons from voting rights and those are in the museum. And so they got to see that and really hear her share her experience. Um, they got to meet um, Barbara Emerson, who was the daughter of Hosea Williams, who was the leader of the Selma Montgomery March. Um, and so they got a really rich experience. And I really thank Antelope Valley College and the California Community College Chancellor's Office for creating pathways like this. Um, the California Community College HBU, HBCU Guaranteed Transfer Agreement um, has 39 uh, HBCUs that our California Community College students have a guaranteed admission to. So they have to have a, a 2.0 GPA and complete 30 transferable units, and they have automatic guaranteed transfer to 39 schools. And one of the another amazing things that they've negotiated is that they can do the common black application free of charge. Um, and they, when they are student with us, they can do that and get that application done for all of those schools. Um, one last thing that I will leave you with is that on November 1st here on our campus, they've asked us to host the HBCU Caravan Transfer uh, Fair here and 25 of those 39 schools will be here on our campus so that all of our students have the ability to apply on the spot, get funding on the spot and get experience and opportunity to transfer to those schools that sometimes have things that are not as impacted like our nursing programs that California does but open up opportunities for them to go to school. So thank you for all of your support um, and for supporting our students. If I may, Mr. Buffalo. Yes. I, I have a comment and a question. Yes. Um, I'm so glad that you took that tour. I'm a graduate of a historically black college and university. I don't believe if I don't express that to you, if you can't see it, you can't be it, right? Um, I graduated from Winston-Salem State University. If you had gone up a state from Georgia, you would have found 10 more HBCUs. The beauty of what I heard today came from you young lady, I'm sorry, I, I'm not great with names. I spend my days in my day job convincing young people that HBCUs are places for everyone. Miss Prairie View this year is from Puerto Rico. Yes. <laughs> okay, so these are places that are welcoming for all students, not just black students. And I've spent so much time trying to share that because there are no HBCUs here on the West Coast. So I am glad to know, I didn't know about the community college transfer agreement. 
Um, my organization has a agreement with the 1890 Foundation, the original land grant universities. Any way that I can support or help as a graduate of a historically black college being raised in poverty and the HBCU being my way here in front of you today. Uh, I am such a supporter of HBCU, so please let me know and I'll be there to cheer or whatever is needed. Thank you so much. This is our fifth, this year was our fifth tour and we have probably about 17 alumni that have come back from and graduated from HBCU and they're on Wall Street. They're the heads of marketing in Sam's Club and they're doing amazing things from ABC. So thank you, thank you, thank you again for your support. And I just wanna say, uh, first of all, what, a, what an amazing trip that uh, you took these incredible young people on. And what I see in all three of them as I listen to them is, is a mind shift from can I to I can, and it's beautiful. And I, I, I'm so happy for them. I'm so, so happy for them because once you, once you know that you can do it and you realize that, I think the hard part's over for you. That's great. Yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes sir. Man, look at y'all. Y'all went, y'all went to the HBCU tour. So I'm so excited for y'all. Uh, I want to just say, actually, um, I can see just a, like she said, a chip a shifts change in y'all, like y'all personality, y'all motivation. You know, I can see it now. Y'all my radar too. So, you know, this coming fall, you know, I'm gonna need some help. The student government need help too, and that's a good opportunity to actually better your resume, you know and better your skill set as well. So y'all definitely on my radar, because I know y'all excited now. You know, I was trying to get y'all excited, you know, when I used to come to Amosia. Can it get y'all excited, but now you went on that tour, I see a difference, I'm ready now. But uh, yeah, y'all know I'm from, uh, I grew up, uh, grew up in the South from about 20 years old to 28 years old, I'm 30 now. And uh, it's a blessing, you know, God, God really, did something tonight because what you said, I've been thinking about going to Winston-Salem. Then I ended up changing my mind to Alabama State, you know, and that's only an hour away from my dad's house, you know, so I might see y'all up there, you know, I might go to one of these HBCUs. And then I'm thankful that y'all told me about, you know, the, the Common Black app, because I'm already thinking like, okay, I'm gonna have to pay for some application fees, but uh, that, that's amazing that we got that. So I'm definitely hopping on that. and. Yeah, I'm with y'all. Whatever I can do to help out, you know, uh, promote. Uh, you know, I couldn't go on a tour with y'all. I actually went out there. I just came back from Alabama, so that's uh, I couldn't go. But anything I could do for y'all from here on out, just let me know. You know, any advocacy, whatever I could do, I'll help. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Great job by the students. You might have been nervous, but you did a great job. You all did amazing. <laughs> Item 12.1, report of closed session action. There was no actions to report out. Moving along to the consent calendar. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Moving along to action items 14.1, approval of resolution number 22. Slash uh, 22 23 slash 2 of the Board of Trustees regarding compensation for absence, member of the Board of Trustees. Do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Assuming no discussion. Yes. Um, Mr. President, I have a comment on this. Um, I don't object uh, to the motion, but I think in the future, when there's a board member uh, that's absent, uh, the, the board should be notified what the reason is and officially excuse that person uh, for that reason. 
And that way the public and the board knows uh, why the person was fined. That's all, thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. No, I abstain. Oh, you abstain. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> Michelle did abstain. Okay, passes or oh, for the next station. Okay, 14.2 approval of the agreement with Valleywide Dental to provide services to students. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Item 14.3, approval of the extension of the contract with Alamo Valley Transit Authority, AVTA, for bus services to students. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Okay, moving along to item 14.4. Approval of non-exclusive agreement between the Fire Protection District of Los Angeles County and Antelope Valley College Fire Academy. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Item 14.5. Approval of consultant services agreement between Dr. Syed Ahmed, AV Lung and Sleep Institute, Nano Valley College as medical director over respiratory care program. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Item 14.6, approval of agreement between Alliance for Children's Rights and Nano Valley Community College District provides training to foster parents free of charge. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Item 14.7, approval of Child Care Alliance of Los Angeles Quality Start, Los Angeles Agreement from July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 14.8, approval of agreement between Los Angeles County of Education and Antelope Valley Community College District for support services to students. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. 14.9, approval of amendment Number one, to services agreement with CWDL certified public accountants for independent audit services provided during fiscal year 2022-2023. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. 14.10, approval of amendment number one, to consultant service agreement between Shaw HR Consulting Incorporated and the Antelope Valley College to extend the contract period and increase compensation. Is there a motion? So moved. Is second. there a second? Okay, any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Yes. Um, this agreement with uh, Shaw HR Consulting, are they... Uh, providing HR services in lieu of us appointing a vice president for HR? Those are not services in lieu of a vice president. Those are services that the college uses when we have to do external investigations. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Item 14.11, and I believe we have um, a comment here. So we're gonna ask for a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, and we have a comment, uh, Jason Ball. Okay. Is this the same comment you have for both 12 and 13 as well? Yes, sir. Okay. I uh, So I have questions 
one question for 11, 12, and 13. So I don't necessarily need to come up for sure. 12 and 13, if that's okay. Appreciate okay. it. Uh, so HERF, I looked this up earlier today, uh, Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund. Uh, I, you know, discussing it with a few uh, individuals a few weeks ago, I learned that in utilizing her justification needs to be provided for uh, its use in, in the, the what the federal government is looking at is does it mitigate COVID so that was is one of the what I learned anyway that is the reason for using it so my question regarding 14 11 12 and 13 is how does you know the uh, these services how do these services mitigate COVID how was her power for her funds justified in approving these contracts? Thank you. Um, so yourself. it's it's uh, the her funds go beyond. Uh, sorry, Jason. <laughs> the her funds go beyond uh, mitigation of the actual infection or disease. It's also meant to mitigate the operational effects of COVID. And so many institutions have utilized her dollars for infrastructure like IT and technology in order to support student learning during this time. And so um, hopefully that addresses a little bit more. We could meet and talk further about the details of some of these arrangements, and I'd be happy to answer any of those questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Item 14.2. 12, approval to utilize cooperative agreement for administration software solutions and related needs with HERF funds. Do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none advice? Approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item 14.13, approval to purchase security camera equipment with software from Black Box Network Services with HERF funds. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. And I believe Ms. Ford. Coming. So, good evening, everyone. It's not really a comment. Well, it could be, but it's more of a question. So, we had for cameras to go up on the campus in the first place, we had to negotiate those. And if there were going to be any changes, additions, moves, or anything, it was supposed to come to our attention. And I see this is here, but I haven't heard anything about it. So I'm and, and it and the reason I'm raising the issue is because it specifically says purchase security camera equipment. So is this to further having cameras on campus for security purposes? Is this for in the classroom? Because I think faculty also have a MOU or TA concerning this, and there hasn't been any communication. That's not a criticism. It's just there hasn't been and. So, I mean, I haven't been alive for about a month from COVID. So I don't know if there was any discussion, but um, so is that the case? And if it is, then there's some effects that need to be looked at because they would have an impact on classified or faculty. So that's, and we can, we can talk about it. Sure, thank you for the comment. Definitely, if it's new, it might be replacement equipment and I'll check into that detail. If it's new and in new positions, absolutely those are bargainable and we'll have that discussion. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We have a motion and a second and uh, any other discussion? Hearing none advice? Uh, I approve. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Okay, item 14.14, approval to use Sierra Joint Community College District Agreement number 21770 to purchase Ad Astra Schedule <clears throat> Licensing Subscription. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none advice? Approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. 
Item 14.15, approval to purchase computer equipment for nursing program from Delft using cooperative piggyback agreement, CMAS, number 3-16-70-0012B. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 14.16. Approval of memorandum of understanding with Familia Barrios Catering, Meadow Valley Community College District for food truck services. Is there a motion? So moved. You second? Yes, Mr. President. Are you seconding? Uh, yeah, I'll second. Okay. It. I'll yeah. second it. Discussion? Okay. Um, for the sake of brevity, uh, I wanted it 1416, 1417, 1480 have to do with the same thing. My concern on all three of these, I didn't see any uh, mention of a health certificate. I saw uh, legal papers about uh, insurance and liability and stuff, but not in any of the agreements did I see a demand for a health certificate from the county health. So shouldn't we have a health certificate uh, for these three uh, food trucks? Each, each of the vendors are required to meet certain requirements in order to do business in the city of um, Lancaster. Um, part of their package um, includes the various licenses and permits and presumpt, uh, they're not attached here, but um, they would have to present those in order to be able to um, provide food services in um, city of Lancaster. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions? I do have a question. Sure. When when deciding about these food trucks that we have on campus, is there any student input in that? There's there yes, you get the student input is also always available. The challenge is um, because we don't have anything currently. Um, trying to find vendors who can immediately. Um, provide assistance or provide us with um, some, some method of um, feeding the people on campus. These were um, people who um, indicated a willingness to do so on short notice and met the requirements in order to do business in the city of Lancaster. As we um, continue to have the need, certainly students can um, have input. Um, you can um, work, Mr. Barr is not here tonight, but um, you can certainly uh, communicate with his office in order to provide input as the student representative, certainly. Okay, yeah, I would like to, now I would like to comment. I would like to, yeah, get students together to decide what type of food truck we would like to have on campus. Possibly, I, I noticed that, you know, these are, we love Hispanic food, but these are both Hispanic food trucks and there are other variety of food trucks in Lancaster that are certified in health. Health, after health certification and all that as well. So I definitely really would love to get students input on that to see what we like. And I believe that there, like I said, I believe that there was um, some input from student organizations. These were the people who were immediately available. Um, and so um, that's why they were, uh, they brought forward the information. And they were prepared to be considered by the board um, as opposed to saying, oh, we want to wait until we get student input. We move forward to make sure that we were able to buy sustenance on the campus immediately. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Passes unanimously. Item 14.17, approval of agreement with Ace Thierry. Yes, wow, well, chicken. <laughs> and El Valley Community College for Food truck service, interesting name. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. And any discussion? Okay, hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passes unanimously. 14.18, approval of agreement with Familia Barrios Catering for food truck services beginning August 15, 2022 through December 2nd, 2022. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item 14.19. 
approval of consultant services agreement with Helix Commercial Cleaning Services for deep cleaning of district kitchen. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any questions? No comments? Okay. Advice approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 14.20, approval to extend the use of Hewlett Packard Enterprise Cooperative Agreement to NASPO, Value Point, and the California Department of General Services. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice. Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 14.21, approval to utilize the approved cooperative piggyback agreement for the purchase of fleet vehicles. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Who is the, uh, who are we having the piggyback agreement with? I will check with uh, VP Barr and get back to you with that information. So thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 14.22, approval to utilize all steel incorporated cooperative piggyback agreement through Omnia Partner, public sector of the district's furniture installation and related services needs. Is there a motion? So, so move. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passes you Okay, item 14.23, approval of contract with Bill's Landscaping for the Marauder Complex Project 17-041 with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Uh, 14.24, approval of contract with Johnny Electric Incorporated for Marauder Complex Project 17-041 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, oh, advice. Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Item 14.25, approval of contract with California Fencing for the Outdoor Gymnasium Project 22-014 with measure AV funds. And do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Passes unanimously. 14.26, approval of project assignment amendment revision to DLR group for the Discovery Lab project 17-039 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? None. Advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 14.27, approval of project assignment amendment revision to Gensler for student services project 17-037 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Item 14.28, approval of project assignment amendment revision to Gensler for architectural services, Avenue J12, dash, Avenue J12 main entry project 17-038 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. 14.29, approval of project assignment amendment revision to Hewitt Zollers for the stadium complex 17-041 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. 14.30, approval of project assignment amendment revision to Golden State Labor Compliance for Swing Space 2 Project 18-011 with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 14.31, approval of change orders for student services project 17-037 with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Any second. Second. Okay. 
Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. 14.32, approval of change order for Discovery Lab Project 17-039 with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion to that? So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion, a second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Um, in a prior meeting, I mentioned consolidating some of these uh, measures uh, into one. For example, we have one, two, three, four, five have to do with Discovery Lab. Is it possible to consolidate that into one motion? It is possible to do that. And I think we'll move toward that in the future if there's no objections. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion further? Hearing none, advice? Approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And now we're on what? 14.31? 31. 33. Okay, caught up. Okay, 14.33, approval to file notice of completion resolution of acceptance on the Discovery Lab Project 17-031. Anderson, three nine. Hmm? <coughs> three nine, excuse me. Anderson Charneski Structural Steel Corporation, Inc. with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So move. Okay, is there a second? We have a second? Okay, Ms. Harvey? Mr. Adams, second. Oh, Mr. Adams. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, advice. Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 14.34, approval to file notice and completion resolution. Incorporated with Measure AV funds. Is there so a motion? Moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice. Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. 14.35, approval to file notice and completion and resolution of acceptance on the Discovery Lab Project 17-039. K and Z Cabinet Company with Inc. with Measure AV funds. We have a motion? So moved. Okay, second. Second. Okay, in discussion. Hearing none advice. Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 14.36, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Discovery Lab Project 17-039, Nibble Link Masonry Construction Corporation Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? Okay. Second. Okay, any questions, comments? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 14.37, approval to file notices our notice of completion resolution of acceptance on the Discovery Lab Project 17-039. And that's Preferred Ceilings Incorporated with Measure AV funds. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. 14.38, approval to file notices of our notice of completion resolution of acceptance on the Discovery Lab Project 17-039, Reliable Floor Covering, Inc. with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. No comments, I assume. Hearing none, advice? Approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay, item, uh, reports and announcements. Academic Senate, Van Ryder. It's good to see all of you. A follow-up statement to our earlier discussion about the EMP. Strategic planning at present is looking at goals that would be included in the Ed Master Plan. On May 18th and June 15th in 2022, the groups met over the summer and looked at some language for three specific goals. They are not put in stone by any means. I would like to encourage, however, that if the board has direction, insight, or anything for inclusion as part of that Ed Messer plan, as we look forward, I would invite that feedback, uh, certainly as the co-chair, and certainly you can directly send it to myself or Dr. Mini Goel, 
and certainly to Dr. Zellin. That is an important discussion as we together see a far off and see things close by and nearby. So your conversation and your questions in that moment with EMP about the goals, where are the goals? Uh, they're forthcoming, but again, a, another invitation, please let us know. If there's something that is a priority to the board that for some reason in our discussions or the consultant has not flushed out, that's important for us to know. Finally, welcome back to the new year. As I talk to many individuals on campus, staff, students, and faculty, there is an excitement and anticipation of good things to come. And I appreciate that. I welcome the board's direction and conversation with the Senate as we look at curriculum and other types of things. There was, a, I guess, a question again about curriculum programs and outcomes and those types of things. Certainly, if there's an inquiry, we can have our chairs um, and institutional research can provide such data. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Item 15.2, Allen Valley College Federation of Teachers, Dr. Jason Bowen. Good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize to President Zillette for walking away so hurriedly. I actually thought that I was supposed to get back to my seat as soon as possible. So, <laughs> but, so, but now I know better. <laughs> uh, the next thing, uh, so I'd like to say is welcome and congratulations to all the new faculty who will be teaching for the first time this fall. So that's a, very exciting. And what we're most excited about is that students get to resume their education and continue pursuing their dreams. So we're looking forward to the beginning of fall and the end of summer and cooler weather. I like to, uh, so the report that I'd like to present on behalf of the Federation uh, regards California Education Code Section 87623. So I'll just read the, the two subsections that I feel are relevant. Each academic employee who is subject to accusations of misconduct is entitled to be provided with the general nature of the accusations made against him or her at least two business days before the employee is placed on involuntary paid administrative leave. Subsection B, that was subsection A, half of it. Subsection B reads, the requirements of subdivision A do not apply in the event of a serious risk of physical danger or other necessity arising from the specific allegations and the employee may immediately be placed on involuntary paid administrative leave. Uh, you know, so we recognize that the district is, you know, receives broad latitude from the state with regards to placing faculty on paid administrative leave. So we don't dispute that. Our concern uh, is potential abuse of the process. Now we make no allegations of abuse. There's no observed abuse of the process. I'm simply stating the concern of the Federation. Uh, University of, of, of uh, Washington, their human resources department actually has three criteria for placing a faculty member on paid administrative leave. One, I'm, I'm paraphrasing the, the, you know, what they listed on their website. If there's a, a risk of, say, destruction of evidence, then that's one reason why a faculty member would be placed on paid administrative leave. The other reason would be what's stated in state law, which is risk of physical harm or injury uh, to parties on the campus. And then the third reason they list for placing faculty on paid administrative leave is disruption of college operations. Now, in the case of, say, destruction of evidence, there's potential evidence, say, in email exchanges uh, or perhaps uh, a website viewing history or something to that effect. These things, if it's, you know, if there's a risk of destroying evidence, those two things could be captured by our ITS. So, you know, ITS is aware, I mean, they can just grab, you know, viewing history off the, the you know, the computers. I mean, I worked at Lawrence Livermore lab Laboratory. It's just kind of funny. So they were young, like we're all 20 year old. They say, you know, the orientation at Livermore, they says the federal lab everything you do is recorded, so be careful. So that's what they told us to do. Anyway, 
So I'm assuming that's the case at most institutions that have an, you know, uh, infra online infrastructure in place. Emails, again, can be captured. And so if there's, again, concern for the risk of destruction of digital evidence, I would think there doesn't need to be concern for that. So in, in closing, you know, I would just like to express that, you know, my hope is that there's regard for the ramifications for placing a faculty on paid administrative leave. Unfortunately, it has to happen and we recognize that. But when it happens, there's also a disruption of students' education, continuity of programs, and there, there's wide ranging consequences. And so this is also means that we have to be mindful of our actions, right? Because our actions don't just affect ourselves, they affect everyone around us. So that's all is we, we would like to see, well, okay, so I'm just remembering the conversation I had earlier. In, er, in prior administrations, meaning longer than 10 years ago, the, the act of placing a faculty on, it wasn't as prevalent, prevalent as it is today. So faculty were not placed on administrative leave in past administrations as frequently as with recent administrations. And so that's one reason why I'm here sharing this with you and why I'm expressing it as a concern. So that's all, again, no allegations, just it's a concern and thank you for listening. Thank you. Hello Valley College Federation Classified Employees, Ms. Ford. Good evening again. Just a few things. First of all, could we have just a, a moment of silence for the classified employees who we have lost? And we'll be doing this again at the opening day. So just a moment. Sure. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, I had to cut it short, but um, I also want to thank uh, Ron, because without you, I just don't believe that we would have gotten to the place where we're at. And, and I am, and we are as classified, so appreciative of your dedication, of your time, and your effort to finally get Frank released to put together the um, memorial service in the, with the maintenance department. That's just so important. And then finally, to have that service that you held for him on Saturday and that Michael was there to represent and to remember and memorialize Frank. And I just, I can't begin to thank you for what that meant because when I sent the email out asking that we come together and it didn't happen I just felt deflated and you just you're just everything Ron okay <laughs> so thank you um and Jennifer I want to thank you for the support that you've given in terms of having a bereavement support services come on campus because I think that's just so important. And I know that HR is working with you on that, but there's just, it's just like, we're just losing people. And it's, it's, it's just so odd and out of place and making me think I better get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just, I just really thank you. And um, I also want to thank you for my jewelry. So <laughs> these new badges we're going to wear, she was sporting hers. And I was like, oh my God, that's jewelry. So anyway, here it is. Thank you. Um, let's see. I believe personally the classified are the greatest group on campus. I'm sorry, Jason and everybody, but I really do. And they are because without us, things just aren't going to move forward. And they are working diligently every day. And you're seeing more and more camp students trickling on the campus and they're classified are doing everything 
to ensure that the students are ready um, on day one so that they can start their classes. And it's just so exciting to see people again, even though it's kind of nerve wracking because of COVID, but it really is exciting. Um, I'm excited that the students are gonna be here, but I'm, I also have a concern because since probably before I got here, classified were allowed to have a longer lunch break than they have now. And, and the reason why is because of where we're located and the time it takes to go to get food and bring it back and what have you. Well, the new semester is coming and we're gonna have food trucks. And one of the things that I've noticed with the food trucks is that the lines are tremendous. And so not only are we just gonna have classified staff on campus, but we're gonna have students too. So that's gonna be an issue. And I'm not trying to bargain with it. Just, just hold, hold off. Um, but I'm just saying that I hope that the district will give some consideration to that because staff are entitled to a work to a lunch period and there's no way they're going to be able to do that within the time that's been allotted. And that's my two cents on that, Bridget. Okay. And I want to, if I can, you had spoken about Cesar Chavez and the unions, and I hope this is all right. I just want to let you know that there seemed to be, I was off, but I never missed a board meeting. I was on Zoom watching y'all saw YouTube, so I saw what went down. And I just wanted to share with you that I personally, as a classified union president, had brought forward Cesar Chavez to be negotiated. Yes, and it was turned down flatly by the district. This wasn't this term, but this was the last section or the one before that. So I just want you to know that as classified, we clearly realize that we are a Hispanic serving institution and that our students should be recognized. And Cesar Chavez is a holiday that should be recognized. And I'm saying, heck, we should even throw in Cook of the Mile. So please don't think that it's not us. And anytime you have a concern about something you think the unions aren't doing, you can contact me anytime. Okay. So thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Confidential Management Supervisor Administrator Employees, Michelle Hernandez. So I didn't miss you this time. You didn't miss me. <laughs> about me every now and then. Yeah. Good evening. Um, just wanted to extend um, condolences to the families of those that we've lost um, in our ABC family, um, our managers, um, administrators and confidential folks, supervisors um, are just saddened with the loss. So do want to extend those condolences. Um, also want to welcome everybody back to fall 2022. Um, our confidential manager, super, supervisors and administrators are excited to be back um, to see students on campus. There's a lot, I'm sure, um, they're going to talk about it a little bit later about all that's ramping up for um, not only opening day, but for the welcome week next week. So we've got a lot going on in student services, a lot going on on campus. Um, and so we just want to um, look forward to a semester of excellence for um, this fall as we get back to business and of students and um, supporting their success. Thank you. Thank you. Panel Valley Associated Student Organization, and that's Oswaldo Gavadia. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, my name is Oswaldo Gavidia. I'm the ASO Senator for the Math Science Engineering Division. And we're, we've been working a lot hard in ASO. Um, we had our first meeting last Friday, and you know, I can't believe to explain, you know, like we're trying to go all out this year, you know, we have, a, we're expecting a lot of students back on campus. So we're expecting a lot of events from our side. Um, sorry, <clears throat> we've been working on our welcome week, um, trying to see what ASL is going to implement as well as our um, welcome reception and our club brush too. So 
as you guys know, at ICC, we have a Club Rush event, and we've been working hard a lot on that. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> we had two appointments, um, Rosario Corona for the Health and Safety Division, as well as myself for the Math Science Engineering Division. So um, we're expected to meet with our respected deans and try to have a plan, a concurrent plan, so we can work with our students as well and see what our students need. Um, one of our biggest goals this year is trying to implement more student advocacy. Um, from past years, we've seen that ASO um, tries to invite students in, but one of our biggest changes this year is that we're trying to do is instead of for students coming to us, we go to students. Um, we're trying to implement some uh, type of events like ASO, you know, coffee with ASO, trying to invite, encourage students to not only think about ABC, but think about what goes, what goes behind the scenes at ABC. Um, we're trying to do a lot of, you know, heritage uh, events, including um, Founders Day, which is supposed to have September 10. Para la Gente is one of our events that's gonna happen in September. And also a lot of health engagement too. Coming back from COVID, a lot of people will miss many you know, traumatizing events. So we're trying to, as ASO and as students, we're trying to sit down with students and tell them, we know, we understand, we're students as well. And we're trying to help them get along the process. Um, we hope to work with each, each and every one of you. President Zealot, we hope to work with you. Um, as you can see, our student trustees already here, and we hope we can work with a, lot, with a lot of you. We have a lot of teachers here. Dr. Bowen, he's one of my teachers, and hope we can work with him. So, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Valley College Foundation, Diane Knepple. Okay. Office of the Superintendent President, Dr. Zalette. Before I begin my prepared comments, um, I wanna thank Pam for thinking alike. When I begin my comments, we are gonna also have a moment of silence. And so I appreciate the, the sensitivity that you have for your, your colleagues on campus. I also want to give credit to Harmony Miller and her team in HR. Um, when, when we talked about all that was going on, I said, how do we help people become more aware of the employee assistance program? And they took that and ran and not only came up with the day of counseling, but also bilingual counseling, because we know that sometimes when you're in a moment of pain, uh, speaking in your native language is actually the way to access and express yourself more fully. So I want, I want you all to know that uh, your HR team that was here before I got here, we're thinking along those lines as well. The other thing I want to say is I, I learned after my first address that the president typically sits at the dais to give her comments, but um, uh, being an English teacher, symbolism is pretty important to me. And I want my colleagues here to know I will address the board from the floor because my job is no better then there's, I am just in a different job. And so we are all colleagues in the work and we all stand and speak from the same place. So good evening trustees. Before I begin my monthly report, I would like to also observe a moment of silent respect for our colleagues who have passed in the last month. We honor Mr. Terry Bowles who served in facilities, Mrs. Virginia Garcia who served in business services and payroll, and Professor Ken Lee, who taught in language and communication arts. Their service is deeply appreciated and they are missed by their ABC colleagues. We offer condolences and sympathy to their families and friends. I spent the month of July on a voyage of discovery. While I'm learning about the campus, the campus is busy with the essential work, finishing summer instruction and preparing for fall 2022 and 2023. While our headcount and FTS are slightly ahead of last fall, we're hopeful that this week's push for enrollment will help keep us ahead. When we look at FTS numbers, last fall we were at 3,576. Right now we're at 3,585. 
And I will take those nine and say that we are ahead. <laughs> Our unduplicated head count last fall was 10,582. Today it's 10,638. That's 56 more students than were on our campus last fall. Those are wins in a time like this when our sister colleges across the state are many of them, most of them are looking at I take those as victories. The campus has been open and welcoming to new student groups and I've witnessed the dedication of our faculty and classified professionals as they help students get enrolled. The athletics programs have held orientation sessions for fall sports and I thank the coaches for the invitation to speak to the scholar athletes as they begin a semester of both study and competition. Student services and academic affairs have been extremely busy working on welcome days and orientations for ASSO, Puente, STEM programs and more. The campus truly has committed to one, to serve students and to two, to be kind. So now for some news across the campus, I wanna give a COVID update. The latest news from LA County Department of Public Health is that we will not have a masking mandate reinstituted at this time. Messages have been circulated on campus to this effect. And while we are not mandated for indoor masking, we continue to encourage those who so desire to wear a mask when indoors and or in a crowded area. We are all interested in a safe, uninterrupted semester. So please sing happy birthday while you wash your hands, use hand sanitizer and mask up if you so desire. COVID supplies are still available if you want to request. For marketing, our marketing consultant graduate communications conducted student surveys and a faculty focus group over the summer to try to determine the most effective media outlets and methods we can use to reach students for improving enrollment. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be uh, presented with that information and some recommendations uh, for us to improve our outreach. And now for welcome week, there have been multiple events that are focused on all campus constituent groups offering training, professional development, orientations, and some social time. I encourage the board to look at the campus calendar to see the range of events that are happening. I also invite the board to attend opening day ceremonies on Friday, August 12th from 8 to 1130. Amongst many entertaining and inspiring events, Cordova will be our keynote speaker and her topic will be nurturing resiliency and restorative practices in the workplace. The scheduled program will also be live streamed for our constituents who cannot be in attendance. However, we haven't yet found a way to live stream lunch. So please join us if you can. A video invitation and a schedule of events is located on the president's page on the ABC website. Finally, I wanna take uh, thank Dan, the strategic planning committee for a great meeting last Thursday. We had a deep conversation, we brainstormed, and we took ideas way outside our typical box to imagine what it would be like, what it would look like to have a college-wide plan that actually motivates us and inspire us. Rather than create strategic plans or master plans, the titles of which beg us to stick them on the shelf and forget them for five to seven years, the Strategic Planning Committee of Antelope Valley College took the brave move to consider creating service plans that describe to our campus and to our community how this college will carry out its service. We discussed the title instead of strategic master plan, we discussed the title ABC serves. That could be our new strategic plan that encompasses major themes that the college undertakes. Serves is an acronym that stands for service, equity, resources, vision, education, and success. By categorizing our work under these key themes, the college would be known as the college who serves its community in all that it does. I wanna thank everyone at Antelope Valley College who's working tirelessly to bring students back and make AVC a welcoming atmosphere that condones student learning and success. We will continue throughout the year to serve students and be kind. Thank you. Board member comments, we'll start with our student trustee. Yes, sir, thank you. Well, Mr. Bowens, I just wanna say thank you for your speech. I didn't know you was a teacher here. That's amazing, I didn't know that, so. Uh, anyways, I met with ASO, I went to their meeting, and like he mentioned, they sworn in two people, and he's one of them over there. But also, we have two applications, so pending at this moment. They approved my student trustee workshop. 
at that meeting for this weekend. Me and Ms. Hernandez will be leaving on Friday and coming back on Sunday. They also approved the a budget for the ICC club rush. And they also approved the Hawaiian theme. So that's gonna be the theme uh, this coming school year. And about all this excitement for the semester to start, can I get a break? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm excited too, but look, we got I got three days to re, you know, just look, relax in peace. I finished uh this honors program, but I'm probably gonna end up dropping out of honors because I can't uh qualify for the rest of the classes I need. But it's not a big deal. Uh, I'll talk to the honors department about that. Anyways, um, yeah, that's all I got. I just hope everybody have a good, a good rest of the week, a good break, or whatever you want to call it, a good tentative inter intercession, you know. So just enjoy it, and I will definitely see Ms. Hernandez on Friday, and I will see everybody else next Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Adams? Uh, I know Mr. Vento would uh, be happy to sit down and talk with you about keeping you in the honors program. So he uh, is a very good guy about uh, individual students and keeping them involved in the honors program. So Mr. Vento would be happy to talk. To you. Um, my condolences, thoughts, and prayers are with the family and friends of those members of our ABC family that we have lost recently. Um, it is odd to get that many people that we've lost in such a short period of time. Um, and it's, it's, it's tough. And I know it is tough for everyone who knew those people. And Ron Saturday was a, was a great event for Frank O'Dell um, up at the Tatch B Loop, which he loved. Um, a lot of the maintenance workers from ABC were there mingling with his ham radio family. And uh, you could tell that everyone, regardless of how they knew Frank uh, loved him. And I think Frank was looking down that day because the weather was perfect and a train went by just before the ceremony and uh, it, was, uh, it was a good morning. Thank you, Ron. Mr. Reeves. Um, sure. It was a great speech by uh, President Lett. I appreciate it. Uh, there are a few things that I, I would hope that we could address this uh, fall and spring semester. We're moving forward on the Chavez day. Um, I would like to have a homeless conference here before the end of the year, in which we have all the uh, providers for the homeless services in the community here. Um, I would like the marketing department to use the uh, news media uh, for some of the marketing, uh, maybe an ad in AB Press. Um, as far as the boardroom, uh, someday we're not going to be in here. We're going to be in a nice boardroom. It's going to blow your mind. But for right now, I would like to have screens on both sides of the dais up here where you can see the screens instead of stretching your neck. That's the goal. And finally, the big goal uh, for the whole college is eventually we will develop a program where we can follow every student. Uh, with the computer and follow their progress from the, the, the minute they sign up to they graduate. And if we can help them along in that process, that's a big goal. So those are my goals for the coming uh, school year. And welcome back, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes I just would like to um, say I am very encouraged and proud of um, what appears to be an improved culture. Um, I know there is a honeymoon period, but I'm a hopeful person by nature. And I do believe that there's a way through humility, and really great leadership to bring everyone forward. And Jennifer, I just want you to know, I, I believe you can do this. Um, my, my second comment um, is I, I offer my condolences to those here at the college that we've lost and also to the community for my absence last month. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not independently wealthy and I have a day job. 
I was uh, stuck in an airport. So I do offer my apologies. My intent is to be here every time, um, but that was something that I just could not avoid. So thank you for understanding. Um, I too, Dr. Bowen, want to welcome all of our faculty back um, for fall semester and especially our new uh, faculty members because right now they have a lot of opportunities out there to go many places and it's such a thrill to hear that they have chosen Antelope Valley Community College as their, uh, as their place where they want to be and we really want to make sure that uh, we welcome them and acknowledge their uh, and celebrate them for coming to our wonderful school. Uh, Pam, I agree, the classified, they are the glue, no doubt about that. I won't argue with you there one, one moment. So uh, I agree with you about that. And um, I, I was really excited this evening and, and grateful that we are doing such amazing things with our students like taking them on these excursions and exposing them to higher education. And you, you could just see the excitement in their face. You can't, you can't fake that excitement. And so I, I don't know who all was behind that trip, but I would hi highly encourage us to provide more opportunities like that for, for our student groups because um, there's nothing better than getting them on a, um, a four-year institution and, and having them uh, start to dream big and uh, want to be there. So, uh, and I too wanna give my condolences for our uh, Antelope Valley family members who, um, and their family uh, for their, the loss of their loved ones. And uh, sorry to hear that we had uh, so many of them in a very short time span. Um, it's never a good thing. Um, and I think um, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Certainly this past week, um, losing that many people in a very short time was a, a terrible shock to everybody. I think in all the years I've been involved with Animal Valley College, starting back when I was a student uh, in 67, I never recall something like that happening. Uh, we lose people, but not that many people in a short time. And it is a shock. It's a shock to the entire college. It's a shock to their friends, their family, and, and all of us grieve for them. Uh, I hope uh, moving forward, uh, we're not going to have anybody else. Uh, uh, involved in that kind of thing. Uh, I hope we all have a very healthy uh, rest of the school year. I think this is really exciting time for us. We're starting back, and I, I don't know, I just feel like this is something important kind of happening here because it seems like there's some manner of normalcy uh, going forward. And I think also there is a new spirit kind of coming out of all this. And I know Dr. Zlat, and, and we've had a lot of conversations now, and she's doing a great job, and she is a very caring uh, and visionary leader, I believe. And so I think we're going to do very well as we move forward this year. I really like hearing from our students and the programs we have. We have a lot of great pro programs. And when you hear it from students, that is very, very special. So we'll see you on Friday and uh, hopefully everybody will be there and to eat. And I promise I will not say very many words. I will not take up your time. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, we have no uh, further business. We're not going back into closed session and we will adjourn to September 12th. Thank you. <laughs>